Let's stay with the ANC and issues around the political party. Let's give you breaking news coming from the Free State now. The Premier there, Sisi Ndombela, has finally resigned. The ANC in that province took the decision to replace Ndombela with its provincial chairperson, Mkolisi Duguana. Ndombela lost the race for chairperson to Duguana during last month's provincial conference there. Uh, she also didn't make it on to the uh, provincial executive committee. Let's go to reporter Molokomoloto, who's tracking those developments, and he joins us now live for more details. Uh, Moloko, of course, you know, many people would ask us why we're using the word finally, but, uh, you know, just to, just to tell me, you know, uh, how I see it is that the branches, uh, Sisin Tombella was, uh, the branches in the Free State did to Sisin Tombella what the branches in KZN had done to um, Sihlezi Galala, and he resigned very shortly after those elections, and she's only resigning now. Hello, Masero. Well, we're saying finally because the decision to fire Sisin Dombela was first taken three weeks ago during the provincial ANC Lekhotla that was mm -hmm. held here shortly after the election of Mkolisi Dukwana along with some members of the provincial executive committee. We brought it to you to say that a decision has been taken that she must resign. Of course, it then waited for until today. We know that uh, yesterday the provincial secretary of the ANC in the province telephoned Sisin Tombela to say that she must reside. However, we understand that uh, she, he actually said uh, he, she must at least wait until Thursday to step aside so that there could be finalization on the replacement, the person who will now take over as premier. But we understand that the premier is going to announce publicly today that she is stepping aside. I've reached out to her office. I spoke to Palisa Chubisi, who is her spokesperson. She's not willing to talk at length, except mm -hmm. that she confirms that today at about 2 o'clock, the premier is going to be briefing members of the media about her future. It is mm. not surprising, of course, simply because she couldn't cut it onto the Provincial Executive Committee after she lost that contest for the chairperson position to Nkolisi Dukwana. And she also did not make it onto, as an additional onto the Provincial Executive Committee. So the writing has always been on the wall. But also, yeah. if you remember, Masero, what the National Chairperson of the ANC, Gwara Mandasha, said during the provincial elective conference that elected Dukwana. Mandasha mm. said that the new provincial executive committee must assess the performance of the free state province. And he was saying that the provincial government here was non-existent. So some are saying that was a red card for Sisi Ndombela. Of course, mm. the other 10 members of the nine, actually, because uh, the, of the 10 MECs, nine of them also didn't make it onto the Provincial Executive Committee of the ANC. It was only Mkholisi Dukwana, the 10th MEC, who is in the newly elected structure of the African National Congress in the province. So Sisin Tombela is not structured politically, and this is why we are seeing them calling for her removal. And finally, she is going to be announcing that resignation later today. Mm, we do have that confirmation that she'll be addressing uh, the media there, Moloko, at 2 o'clock, as you said a little earlier on. But she was supposed to be delivering her State of the Province address next week. Does this mean Duwana is the one that will then, uh, you know, tell residents of Bloemfontein how the province is doing? Well, yes, she was meant to deliver the state of uh, the province address next week, Thursday. She will no longer be doing that because she would not be the premier. As to who is going to deliver that particular state of the province address as the premier, up to so far, we don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. um, we believe and suspect that Ngoni Sidugwana is likely to replace her. However, that is a process that still needs to unfollow in that the provincial executive committee, we understand, has recommended the three names as per the constitution of the ANC the three names of possible replacements. It is the name of Nkolisi Dukwana, we have heard, but also the name of uh, Dibulelo, um, I beg pardon, I forget her surname, but she is the new proven deputy provincial secretary, and mm. also she is a member of parliament, but also the name of the deputy uh, provincial chairperson has also been recommended. As matters stand, it would appear that Nkolisi Dukwana, um, the stakes are 
uh, or the odds are stacked in his favor in that he is the chairperson of the ANC, but also he seems to be very close to the president of the ANC and also to the secretary general of the African National Congress, Figile Mbalula. That decision, we understand, must be taken. The decision to appoint the replacement for Sisin Tombele, it must be made by the top seven, the national officials of the African National Congress. What we know is that this uh, national, special national executive committee of the ANC that was held last night did not discuss the future of Sisin Tombele. We spoke to some mm. of the people who were in there who said it was not even on the ag agenda as an item. So I I'm not too sure up to so far whether the ANC national officials have entertained that particular decision as to who is going to replace Sisin Tombele. Unfortunately, after several attempts of reaching out to Lutulia House through the spokesperson, we couldn't reach her. But... It is certainly going to happen today that Sisin Dombela will vacate her position as the premier of the free state. Mm, and Moloko, if you'll allow me, I want to go back to the point that you made about uh, the uh, national chairperson, Gweda Mandashi, and the uh, utterances that he made during uh, the elective conference there, the provincial elective conference there. Uh, does it also have to do, perhaps, Moloko, with the fact that we saw how divided the free state was, which in turn resulted in them uh, going for elective conference after national elective conference? Well, it really speaks to the politics of alignment, Masero. Uh, clearly, it was a, a, a clear sign and an indication. This is the person, Gwede Mandashi, as an official, national official of the ANC, who was going to be sitting in that particular meeting that would decide on the future of the premier. Already he was uh, pinning his colors to the mast in that he had shown publicly that he no longer had confidence in Sisin Dombela because he was lamenting, for instance, the state of municipalities in this province. Ironically, it is Mkolisi Dukwana as the MEC for Coxta in this province who has the political responsibility to oversee the functionality of municipalities. And that would also mean if Sisin Dombela as the premier failed to make sure that municipalities function, by extension, it also means that Mkolisi Dukwana has also failed. And the question, therefore, is what makes Mkolisi Dukwana eligible for a promotion? Presumably, it is all because he has now emerged as the most powerful politician in the ANC in this particular province. Because if you were to look at his track record as the Coxter MEC, surely that would not make him a suitable candidate, others would argue. But of course, divisions in this province are clearing. They are open out in the public. That is why you have seen Kolisi Dukwana being elected along a slate in that all the people who contested him um, none of them made it onto the PEC. So it was the issue of the winner takes all, a clean sweep in other ways. And mm. the future, therefore, of the other nine MEC hangs in the balance because they are not structured. But when you speak to some of the people here, they are saying people like Tate Mahwe, who is the MEC for uh, education, he seems to have done well because this province educationally in terms of the results seems to be ticking all the boxes. There are some people who are saying perhaps he's one of the people who can be retained but because he's not structured a decision will obviously be taken as to whether they believe he must stay or not. But the question is whether uh, 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 because my understanding is that some of the people in the PEC who possibly would want to be MECs are not mm. even in the provincial ex uh, legislature. And we know in terms of the constitution, the premier is limited to the legislature when it, com it comes to appointing the members of the uh, uh, provincial executive council, the MECs. The question is, will those that he decides to remove as MECs be willing to resign from their positions in the legislature to make way for the newly elected PEC members? That is a game that obviously we will all have to watch. Mm, and uh, the Secretary General of the ANC, Moloko, uh, actually speaking just before uh, we came live to you there in Bloemfontein, and he was asked a question particularly about what's happening in the Free State. He says the meeting yesterday, the NEC meeting yesterday, took a decision to deal with uh, parallel structures of the Free State Conference. Uh, you know, uh, those are the utterances that we've been hearing um, all along, right? 
Oh, yes. I am also aware, indeed, that uh, the, the special uh, NEC of the ANC last night decided, actually, to endorse this particular... Uh, 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 um, because you would recall in Mangawung there were two uh, uh, conferences, parallel conferences, one mm. held at I Invelo Lodge. It is the one that was sanctioned by the then uh, in, uh, uh, interim structure of the province. And the one that was held at the President Hotel, the report that was compiled by David Matobo, who was leading a two-man team that was investigating those two conferences recommended that the NEC endorse the one that um, was held at Invelo. In other words, the other parallel structure doesn't seem to be enjoying the support of the NEC. And the decision or the, the recommendation was that the ANC in the Free State must actually consider taking action against those who organized that particular parallel conference that was held at uh, the President Hotel. Of course, the fact that the ANC members in Mangawung decided, of course, after losing a court uh, a, a challenge or application to interdict that uh, conference that was held at Invelo, is an indication that seemingly they were not willing to kind of like unite with people they believed uh, were not uh, the rightful people to attend that Invelo conference. So that tells you already that they don't get along. The challenge for this PEC is going to be that as they go on to discipline, because we know they have already written letters to some of the leaders who were elected at that President Hotel conference mm. to say that, explain why we mustn't discipline you. So those people and their supporters surely are not going to leave this lying down. And this is likely, of course, to widen the gap, widen the factions and the tensions. So their challenge is going to be to heal this particular divisions and ensure that they reunite the members of the ANC who were aggrieved leading to that particular regional conference.